So over the past few years, there's been a trend among homeowners taking their average boring looking lawns and transforming them into lawns that closely resemble your local golf course. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the more that it takes to get a lawn like this, and also the company that just introduced it to a lot more people. So if you're looking to make your lawn look like a golf course, there's two things that you need to make that happen. Number one is a flat, smooth lawn, and number two is a real mower because that's gonna allow you to mow the grass much shorter than you normally would with your rotary mower. Now chances are, if you live down south, you've seen these mowers around your neighborhood, but if you live up north like me, then it's a different story. When it comes to real mowing in the Midwest, there's one major issue that we all face. There's nowhere to service or sharpen our real mowers. But that's not the case anymore because there's a new player that just entered the Midwest. And not only are they sharpening their reels here, but they're also manufacturing them here. So when I heard True Cut just open up a facility in the Midwest, I knew I had to check it out. So this past Friday, my wife and I went down to Indiana and we toured their facility. So when I first arrived to the True Cup facility, I met up with the warehouse manager, his name was Dan. And let me tell you guys, if everybody in Indiana is like Dan, then I already know where I'm moving my family to next. So once I got there, the first thing that I saw was this big laser. So me being curious, I immediately asked Dan what that was. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Okay, so what we got here is basically a fiber laser cutter. Cuts sheet, cuts metal pipe, a lot of production. Basically, a lot of our uh, lawnmower parts, everything we do in the shop, fabricating wise, pretty much is gonna go through this machine. We have over hundreds of true cut parts that we, we have to process, so we bring files out from the computer on these true cut machines, and basically we can cut thousands of parts in a day. A lot of them will get formed in the brake presses after they come off the laser cutter. It's just about everything in the true cut parts will start here, it'll run through here. Just this part, for example, is a, a wheel hub. So the piece of pipe you see here will go right in this tube feeder, you see. Very accurate, very quick process. A lot of technology into this, works real well. So we can make very precise parts. This whole clutch assembly here, just to give you an idea, a piece of pipe there gets ran through the new machine. All these flat parts come off there, will end up going to a press, get formed. So this is just another example of a uh, true cut part that we do. The flat part here is came off the laser, cut the teeth, cut the holes, goes through the punching process, which we can just kind of give you an idea here. Press comes down, hits it, puts a bearing in it. This eventually will become a sprocket assembly or sub assembly for the true cut machine for the clutch. You're standing back, don't know a lot about it from a distance and say it, it looks pretty simple. It's, there's really a lot to a machine like this. All right, Dan, so one thing I got to say when I when you first brought this mower out is I was pleasantly surprised at the build quality of this thing because it kind of reminds me of my Toro Greensmaster that I had that's like full steel and I could just tell it's kind of like a tank. I agree. I've, I've been in the this type of business for a long time. I've seen a lot of different products. This is a very well manufactured machine. The years that we put into building this, I mean, there's been a lot put into the the tooling, the dies, you know, that make all these parts, form all the steel parts, everything we build from scratch. So when it comes to the drive controls, there's no plastic gears or anything in there? No plastic gears at all. Everything's metal through this whole, the whole clutch system. All steel, no plastic. All right, Dan, so can you show us a little bit around this mower? Because this is my yeah. first time actually seeing a true okay. cut in person. Yeah, so this is one of three different sizes, really. We call this, as you can see on front there, it's the C27. This is the um, big boy. It's the big boy. Kind of like me. Yeah, and me. <laughs> but this has the uh, 27 inch wide, seven blade reel on it, fully welded. And George, I don't know when you get something, but I, I don't like assembling a whole lot of stuff. What's pretty cool about these, it's pretty much assembled when you get it. You pull the main frame out of the box and you take the handle box and, you know, just very little work and this thing's ready to mow. So since you mentioned about assembly, one thing I've noticed is a lot of the popular reel mowing companies these days are assembled in Europe. But you guys actually assemble this right here, right in America? We do everything right here 
right here in the factory. You know, we bring the plastic containers in, but all the assembly on the mower, really from scratch, we do it all from here. And that's a big reason why I actually drove down here to Indiana is because I like supporting companies cool. that are made in the USA. Cool. All right, Dan, so one of the biggest reasons I looked into getting a true cut is because you guys have a bench grinder here, you're in the Midwest, and when it comes to sharpening reels in the Midwest and getting service done, there's really some slim pickings. So I know this is your bench grinder right here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? This particular grinder right here, we have a, the 10 blade reel on. Um, our other grinders on down are same type of grinders, but we do the seven and five blades on them. Reason being we have index machines on each side of them where we get the rotation just right to do the sharpening on them. But it's, uh, it's quite a process. It's the real grinders, but very precise. It's a key part of the business, really. I mean, this is a big deal right here. I mean, if you don't get this part right, yeah. uh, nothing's gonna work. For all my viewers that are thinking about possibly getting a true cut, if they ever wanna come here and get their more serviced and get their reels sharpened, that's no problem, right? Correct, yep. You can definitely resharpen blades. A lot of people you know, don't know, we have a final process on a drum sander that we put the relief edge on. Oh, you uh, guys put a relief grind on there as well? Yep, and I can show you, I can show you that on our other machine, but it's, just a very fine, fine edge. Um, but it's That's actually really awesome to hear because a lot of the residential real mower reels don't have relief grinds on them. Really? And one thing I could tell too, this looks like a beefy reel, man. I'm not used to seeing reels that are actually that beefy and have that much like steel on them. Usually they're a lot more thinner and they don't look as robust. It is solid. It'll hurt if it falls on you. I mean, it's are you speaking from experience? A little bit. <laughs> Now in the past, I would have never even considered getting a true cut because most of the people that use them live down south, they're real mowing their Bermuda, and there's nowhere to service those mowers around here up north in the Chicago Midwest area. So now that their plan is in Indiana, it gives me a lot of sense of security when it comes to servicing my mower, that if I ever need to get the reel sharpened, I could just take a road trip down there, get it done and come back in the afternoon. So you're probably wondering, does this mower stripe? Because if you pay attention to the opening B-roll of this video, you'll see that it doesn't have a roller on it, that it uses cast wheels what i did personally is i ordered a third party roller so this is the roller that i ordered i got it from real rollers what that's going to do is it's going to give a striping effect to your lawn so if you're new to my channel over the past four years i've been on the quest to find the perfect real mower testing everything from Toros to McLean's to Swordman's to Outlet's, and still none of them have been a perfect fit for me. My most recent real mower, which was an Outlet, if you guys remember, I did a video last year titled, I bought a $2,500 real mower for testing purposes. Well, it's been a year, I tested it out, but that still has not fit the bill and hasn't lived up to the hype. A few reasons I ended up selling the Outlet is the little plastic real engagement lever on the bottom, the safety switch. It ended up breaking on me, not only once, but twice. And if you ask me, when you spend $2,500 on a mower, there's absolutely no reason that you should be having little plastic parts like that. When I look at Allet, I look at it like one of those British luxury cars, like a Range Rover, which I used to have one, by the way. I look at it like a Range Rover, you know? It looks really nice on the outside. It's a luxury machine, but all the accessories on it are just built to break. And that's what I experienced. The second reason is the handlebars. Now, I'm not really sure who Allet is making these mowers for, but if you're a taller guy like me, just expect that you're gonna be hunched over the whole time mowing, and it's gonna end up killing your back. And when you're mowing every other day, then that's just not a sustainable way to keep on mowing. And the third reason is their sales practices. Their new mower costs like five or $6,000. Now, I don't know who they're marketing that mower for, but I can't afford it. I'm sure most of you guys can't afford it. And I just can't get behind a company that's just gonna keep on increasing their prices over and over and over again.